Can you survive a jump from the International Space Station? Of course you are wearing a spacesuit with a tank of oxygen and also a parachute to land safely. Before you start packing your supplies, let's see what kind of jump you are signing into. The jump. The ISS orbits 400 kilometers or 250 miles above the Earth, and it travels at a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour or 17,500 miles per hour to keep the orbit around the Earth. With that speed, it travels a complete orbit around Earth in 90 minutes. For reference, the highest freefall jump performed by a human is 38 kilometers or 25 miles by the Australian skydiver Felix Baumgartner. In this jump, he was able to reach the speeds over 1,300 kilometers per hour or 800 miles per hour, well above the sound barrier. However, now you are going to attempt a jump from ISS 10 times higher than the world record. Can you pull this off? There's only one way to find out. So without further delay, let's jump. Soon after you jump out of the ISS, you would imagine you are cruising down to the Earth but when you turn back at the ISS, you may be surprised to see that you are almost at the same altitude as the space station. A jump from the ISS is not the same as a jump from a cliff or a plane. It is orbiting the Earth. When you jump, you also have the speed of the ISS. You may be slowly drifting horizontally away from it due to the inertia from the jump, but you are not falling down towards Earth. Instead, you are orbiting Earth alongside the ISS. But don't worry, you will experience a tiny drag due to the extremely thin atmosphere up there. As you don't have thrusters like ISS to maintain the orbit, slowly your orbit starts to decay. But unfortunately, this will take a long time, at least months, to start your descent towards Earth. So better be prepared with some snacks. There is one big problem before you enter the Earth's atmosphere, and it is a problem we created ourselves. Space junk. In the low Earth orbit where the ISS orbits, the density of space junk is higher, and small fragments of broken satellites and rocket stages are flying in all directions at extremely high velocity. There is a high chance that someone is going through you in a blink of an eye in the months-long journey of you in the low Earth orbit. But think you are extremely lucky now you were able to gradually descend into the atmosphere with your supplies without space debris killing you instantly. Now you are going to face your biggest challenge, entering the Earth's atmosphere. Before that, please make sure you hit the subscribe and bell icon, as I no longer have faith in your journey. The Entry to Atmosphere After your long journey in low Earth orbit, you will slowly start to enter the denser parts of the atmosphere. But there is a huge problem. You are traveling at mind-blowing speeds of about 25,000 kilometers per hour. This will create so much drag on you that friction between you and air molecules will heat you up to temperatures over 1500 degrees Celsius. Your spacesuit is well designed to withstand temperatures from minus 156 degrees to 121 degrees Celsius. But unfortunately, it is not likely to withstand the temperatures of re-entry into the atmosphere. Your parachute is not going to help either. It will create the drag quicker, heating up you quicker. The spacesuit will disintegrate quickly, exposing you to the extreme conditions. In a few seconds, you will be burned out leaving nothing of you and an inactive subscriber for me.